Hello, so some of you have asked me, how are you supposed to add foreshadowing into your comics? And good question, okay? So here's my number one super top secret secret for adding foreshadowing to your comic. And before we get anywhere into it, you need to know this top secret. So here we go. Here it is. Finish your script first, okay? Foreshadowing is one of those things that is a heck of a whole ton easier when you know what you're trying to foreshadow and you save it for later when you're editing your story. So please do that. Please do not worry yourself super tons about foreshadowing. It's perfectly acceptable to add foreshadowing along the way, but it's a way heck ton more easier if you just do it in your second draft. So there you go. That is my secret for foreshadowing. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> All right. Anyways, um, aside from that, I have a whole bunch more to say about foreshadowing because obviously some of you are finished your scripts and some of you will want to add it along the way. And before I say that, I just want to say that I'm super proud of myself for finishing editing the uh, Honeywell's audiobook. So yeah, that's really cool. If you want to have that, I have it on itch.io, but you can also pre-order through Backerkit if you haven't already, and you can get the really cool sounding audiobook that my my good pal Jonathan Coventry narrated. So yeah, it's really good. It sounds like a real audiobook, and it's freaking me out, guys. Okay. All right. Anyways, you guys, you guys aren't here for that. You guys are here for foreshadowing. So let's begin with foreshadowing. What is foreshadowing? How do you do it effectively? And what do you avoid? Okay, so foreshadowing is basically writing seeds. Um, I think seeds are like the best analogy for this. They're like little hints that you sow at the beginning of your story so that they don't really feel like they come out of nowhere when they blossom into flowers. But it's like it's not always bad to have something come out of nowhere. But when it comes to large, more consequential aspects of your story, it's really good to foreshadow them ahead by planting a few seeds. And like seriously, I love the seed metaphor because it's just the best descriptor for what they are. Because seeds are like innocuous, small little things that are easy to look over. Over. They don't look what they're going to end up like later, except to like an expertly trained eye. And even if you notice the seeds, you don't always know what they're going to grow into. So that's why I think seeds are great, because they're just like the perfect analogy for foreshadowing. But analogies aside, what is some more practical aspects of foreshadowing? Like how do you create it so that it is innocuous and it is seed-like? I think foreshadowing exists in two forms that you need to be aware of. There's like in-story foreshadowing that is a direct result of things happening in your story. For example, like a pile of books that is must in the corner because someone has actually been sneaking into the house and messing around with the books. Um, that is a type of foreshadowing. Um, it's a lot more direct. It has an in-world explanation. But another example is the type of foreshadowing that is more a meta level foreshadowing. And it's a foreshadowing that creates mu a mood, a picture, or it just suggests that something is going to happen later without that thing actually showing up. As far as your story is concerned, there's no actual reason for it occurring usually. Like meta level foreshadowing might be a bookshelf that's full of like crime novels alluding to the fact that a murder is going to take place in that room, but the crime novels didn't really cause the murder in any way. They just kind of they gave a little foreshadowing. They gave a hint to it. They gave a little sense of darkness and mystery to the room. And then when you look back on it, you're like, whoa, this room has murder written literally all over it. How did I not see this coming? While it isn't super important to know the difference between the two while you're writing, it's really important to make note of the meta level foreshadowing because I think it's easy to forget about and stick to things that are more like concrete. When I think most foreshadowing, more most foreshadowing tends to exist on this meta level, and it's a super powerful tool, and I would recommend using it. So with that in mind, how do you deliver foreshadowing to your reader without cluing them in consciously to any twists that you have coming? One way is to shape aesthetics and design to invoke future events. Okay, add small items to design that alludes to a character's past or alludes to a secret of 
something, anything. It's just one of the most powerful tools you have is like working with within designs that you have and allude to other things. Like maybe they carry a locket or something, just something that creates interest without um, straight up saying it. A lot of the times with foreshadowing, with more direct objects that you know that your reader is going to look at, you want your foreshadowing to be a lot more vague, just kind of create a sense of mysteriousness, a sense of interest, but not actually clue them into what they're looking at. If your foreshadowing is ever fo on the forefront, under scrutiny, you want it to be very subtle, but intriguing, but not like outright stating what it is. When your foreshadowing is more hidden, then you can be a lot more blatant with it, like writing murder on the walls. Um, subtly, of course. At a meta level, uh, your character is going to have something, if like a character is going to have something happen to them, you can add a lot of hints throughout their design, even if it doesn't make sense that they would do this. Like, just certain elements that are hidden within their design that end up alluding to something that they don't know is going to happen, your readers don't know that it's going to happen, but it just kind of adds this little through line callback sort of thing. Like, um, all I can think of is murder, guys. That's a clip. Um, like, if you're going to have a character lose their head, like, you can um, sort of uh, create, I don't know, you could just straight up put a line, like a, a a nice red ribbon there. Good, good little hint. Or anything that alludes to that. Um, illusion. I keep saying allude, but illusion is a very powerful tool for foreshadowing. Illusion is when you um, make reference to something outside of your work, be that like another story or some sort of historical illusion. So adding those kind of elements can create a lot of foreshadowing, or they can create, they can also use, you can also use illusion a lot for theme and such. But creating elements of illusion to things like that in your character's design is very helpful for foreshadowing things that are going to happen later. I, 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 such such rambles for me, Bones. Yeah, so at a meta level, pay attention to what happens to your character and see if you can create sort of some of those elements within your character's design um, completely aside from more practical elements that would show up in their design which allude to who they are. I guess the meta ten tends to be an allusion to their future, whereas more practical ones are going to be more of an allusion to their al allude to their past. Okay, let's move on from that. Another way of foreshadowing is ha having your characters brush up with similar events in innocuous scenarios before they become larger, more um, big events, or have characters make comments that end up being true despite them not knowing that they were going to be true in the first place. Remember when I told you guys like to add things happening in your scenes, you know, like frame your scenes with interesting events? Uh, that framing is a great place to add foreshadowing. Whenever you're adding flavor, um, you can be adding foreshadowing at the same time. Usually people will look at the flavor added to a scene and just be like, oh, what a fun scene. How enjoyable, but they don't realize that you might be creating parallels for something that happens at a later point. Because if you have like an innocuous scene where something happens and then you have a later scene where the beats follow in a very similar way and they already know how that first scene ended, you're going to create a foreshadowing where they're like, oh no, when this was innocuous, this didn't matter. But now that this is the real deal, I have just figured it all out sort of deal, I guess. And again, that's that's a lot more meta level, I guess, because they didn't see that coming, but you, you sure did. Anyways, what else is there? What else is there, guys? Remember, another great way to add foreshadowing is through humor, because people like to brush off humor because they're like, oh, it's just a joke. And then it turns out to be true. Like all of those jokes, it, it wasn't just jokes. It was a reality. All those lol, someone could lose their head over here. Why am I obsessed with like head cutting off today? Oh my god, what is this? Okay, anyways, it's like, oh, be careful, you might lose your head, lol. And then in the third act, someone just straight up gets their head off. You know, that is foreshadowing. That's how humor can hide things because people don't think much of humor a lot of the times. Unless all of it turns out to be true and then they sense a pattern. But otherwise, usually humor is a great way. Uh, and I think that's actually 
uh, one of the most important things to know about foreshadowing. And I think that's where I'm going to leave this today is by bringing up this last concept, which is, is that foreshadowing should rarely ever. In fact, it probably never should be the main focus of a, your of your scene, of your character design, of your character design, etc., etc. Because um, the goal is to make it very subtle. As soon as it steps out of subtle territory, it's just a plot point at that point. And if you want to know if you are hitting your your beats well, you're going to have to get a beta reader, okay? You're going to have to ask people to theorize after every scene so that you can get a better sense of how people progress through your story because you can't do that on your own because foreshadowing is never going to work on you unless you hit your head and forget the entirety of your book and I don't think that is a great way to go about writing um, and hoping that you hit your head and forget every time so yeah so get some beta readers and have them theorize and see where they think things are going see how you are able to control that sort of um, expectation and payoff and that's my video on foreshadowing thank you for listening i'll see you guys next time um happy sunday bless heck yeah